Hi, in this tutorial, we will learn how to create a simple budget tool using Python. Now, this project is suitable for beginners because it tests and strengthens your fundamental Python skills. Also, we won't be creating any graphical user interface in this tutorial. First off, let's start by creating our Python file. I've already created mine and named it budget tool. Next, let's create our class. Now, you won't necessarily have to create a class in order to create this project, but what I suggest to do is that you try to create a class whenever you can so that you understand how a class works and how a method and function works within each class. Let's start off by asking for our user to provide us with the total amount of budget that they have. So let's say that we have a variable called budget, which equals to the input from the user of how much is your budget. And we can test it out by printing our so, dot budget. How much is your budget? So let's say 900. And we have your total budget is 900. Now this is a good start. But what would make it even better is that we can clear the terminal whenever we try to print or restart the program. So in order to do that, let's import our operating system, then let's type in os.systemdls. Now this line actually helps us clear the terminal screen every time we start or run this program and call in the budget class. See? So let's type in 900 and voila. We can make it look even better by adding a slash n to the end of our first sentence. What this does is that it starts a new line after this sentence. So let's try that out and see what it looks like. The input is now below the sentence. Great. Now let's move on and calculate our overall budget by following the 50, 20, and 30 budget rule. We can calculate our spending budget by multiplying our budget 0.5. This means that half of our budget goes into the spending category, which includes bills, groceries, and rent or mortgage. After this, let's create a main function. Now this will be like a main menu for our little program. So instead of printing our budget here, let's move it down to the main. So it's the first line that we see. And after asking for our budget, let's call our main function. And let's also clear the screen when we come to the menu. Let's also print out this calculator follows the 50, 20, 30 budget. So that users know how the, their budget are calculated. And let's start a new line this so that the budget is printed below. Now let's try it out. Okay, how much is your budget? Now as you can see, after asking for the input, we actually called our main and we are right now in the main menu or the main function. Now this looks good, but I want our budget to show two decimal points instead of one. So let's go back to our third line here in the main function and add in the format for our budget. Now let's try that again and voila! Our budget is now showing in the point of two decimal points. So after printing this, let's give the users the option to proceed what they want to do next. So let's say main option equals to integer input. Now what this does is that it prompts the users to enter an integer that we provide them. For example, let's say what do you want to do? And we can put in one view overall budget to view spending budget and let's state our if else statement so if main option equal equals one which means that the users enter one they will select view overall budget so let's call in our self dot overall budget now if we try to run this now we won't get anything because we haven't created our overall budget function but we will do that in a second below. L if main option equal equal to self dot spending budget else exit. So if the user enters anything other than 102, we will quit this program. Now let's create our overall budget function. So once again, we clear our screen for a better user experience. Now let's say we let the user choose how much percent they want to save instead of 20, maybe they want to save 30. So we can add in an option, say how much do you want to save? New line, first option, 20%, second option, 30%. So if option equal equal one, our self.saving will be equal 
to 0.2. Well, if option equal equal to our self.saving will be 0.3. Else print error. Please select only one or two. Now we can calculate the money that we are able to save according to the percentages that the users have chosen by multiplying that number with the budget that they originally entered. So self.finalSaving equals to self.budget, which we declared in the beginning, multiplied by self.saving, which is the saving that they the saving percentages that they have chosen prior to this. And then we have self.extra, which is money allocated for leisure spendings, will be the same as self.budget minus by self dot final saving and also our self dot spending. Now what we want to do after calculating is print it out. So print new line our spending is equal to self dot spending, the money that we need to save, self dot final saving, and the extra money allocated for leisure spending is in self dot extra. Now let's add in a pause right here. Now what this does is that it waits and prompts the user to enter a key for the program to move on. So let's try to run our program and let's type in our budget and let's select the first option because we already created the overall budget function. Okay, let's say I want to save 20% and as you can see, it has split our budget according to the 50, 20 and 30 rule. Now let's make this look even better by adding the two decimal formats to these few lines that we just printed out. So let's go back up here, copy the format, paste it down into our printed lines. Now let's try this again, and this time, let's say we choose 30% for savings. Now as you can see, the money in extra and to save have actually changed. So next up, let's create our spending budget function. And maybe up here, after we're done printing our overall budget, let's go back to the main menu. Let's call back our main function. So in the budget function, once again, we're going to clear the terminal script. Then, just so that users won't forget how much is their spending budget, let's print out the spending budget in the top line. Next, let's ask for the total amount of rent that the user has to pay. So we can do that by creating a new variable rent. And let's ask the user to enter how much rent do you pay in a month or how much rent do you pay monthly. Now, instead of using integer here, we use float because this might not happen, but there could be a chance that the rent that they pay have decimal points and that needs to be stored in a float format. Next, let's ask for the total amount that the user has to pay for bills. So bills equal same as before, float, input, new line. How much are your monthly bills? New line. Now, according to the 50, 20, 30 budget rule, the 50 spending budget that we use includes rent, bills, and groceries or food. So after taking up, taking in the rent and bills, we can actually calculate what's left for groceries. So we can just create a variable named groceries equal self.spending minus rent minus bills. Let's print out all these expenses. Next, let's print out all the money allocated for all these expenses. So expenses, followed by the new line, rent will be rent. Let's also add in a two decimal format. Next, after rent is bills. Finally, groceries. Let's pause the system, and wait for the user to press any key before proceeding on. And let's also go back to the main menu after all this is done. So self.main. So let's run this and try it out. So let's say we have $1,000 for our budget and we want to view our spending budget. Now as you can see here, our spending budget is 500 because we already calculated 50% is to be spent and the 50 is to be split up into 20 and 30% into our savings and leisure spending. So how much rent do we pay? So let's say 150 and our monthly bills are 50. So as you can see here, our rent is 150, our bills are 50, and what we have left after deducting out 200 from our 500 spending budget, we have $300 left for groceries. Press any key to continue, and we're back in the main menu. So now we can go over, view our overall budget, and that's it. 
Now when we go into our folder and double click on the Python script that we created, we can actually just run it inside our terminal. So as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Now this is a very simple and easy project that you can create in under an hour. The main idea of this project is to test and strengthen your fundamental Python skills and your mathematical skills. Next time, we'll create a graphical interface to go with our budget tool. Thank you for watching. Hit like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Bye.